In this video, I'm gonna reveal some behind the scenes information perspective that I've gained through private conversations with the DOD, the US Air Force, the DARPA of the German government, as well as billionaire and co-founder of Boston Scientific, John Abel. These are all organizations and individuals who have reached out to me personally to talk about the current state of brain computer interface technologies. Given this perspective that I've gained through Tech for Psych over the last few years, when the head of Singularity University and XPRIZE Foundation, Peter Diamandis, makes a public prediction on Twitter about reaching mainstream BCI in the early 2030s, and then Elon Musk, who founded Neuralink, remarks, quote unquote, sooner, <laughs> I believe it. In order to understand the current state of BCI and how it might be viewed by the elite, there's no better place to get a snapshot of these technologies than looking around the Consumer Electronics Show that happens every January in Las Vegas. But there is something deeper here that I wanted to discuss on this video, and I think that they are things that are not being discussed in the public forums about brain-computer interface technologies. We'll be sure to cover that through this video and make predictions about how the elite among us view BCI overall. But but my question is, what exactly do they not want to say publicly about BCI at this time? In my opinion, if the question is, will we have mainstream BCI by the end of the 2020s? The answer is, we already do. It's happening right now. One visit to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas will convince you that that's true. Last week, I spent several days perusing the digital health section and other areas of CES and doing private hotel room demos with my friend Katie Moore from the Katie Type A YouTube channel, and we had an absolute blast. On the surface, we saw over a dozen BCI companies showing off their gear, everything from EEG hard hats for construction to AI-powered sleep trackers to to extremely high-end virtual reality BCI headsets. These technologies are here and they are here to stay. But honestly, what I found most interesting this year about BCI at CES is the undercurrent at the event. If you look below the surface level, there's definitely a big shift happening in the industry. You don't have to look any further than the Friends headband based out of Boulder, Colorado, that is coming out to consumers this spring and showcased at CES this year. With 15 patents in AI, system design, and material science, the headband is boasting some impressive capabilities. And what caught my eye is that it's backed by Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. If you don't know, Founders Fund has over $11 billion in aggregate capital, and they have been early investors in Facebook, SpaceX, Airbnb, Lyft, Spotify, that list goes on and on. The Friends headband uses bone conduction speakers to lull you asleep based on the AI analysis of your brain patterns. Katie and I were able to talk to the founders of Friends to include pulmonologist Dr. Robin Dieterding, and then we went to the launch event, which was very inspiring. I'll definitely have an official review this year after I'm better able to test its sleep capabilities, but sleep tracking is definitely something that high-end investors are looking at very seriously. Sleep tracking itself is relatively innocuous, but it looks like this might permeate into other areas of our lives as well. Even just walking around the event, you could see things that would stimulate your mind in the world of BCI. There was a small booth with EEG and hard hats from a Chinese company that was extremely interesting. The idea would be to put neural tracking technology into hard hats to make sure that construction workers were focused. Now you can look at this two ways. One way is making sure that everybody is paying attention in a place where there's a lot of heavy machinery and accidents that could cause lives. The other is worrying about Big Brother surveillance technologies where companies can use technology to track where you're at and what you're doing at all times. And obviously, at a certain level, this would be a total invasion of privacy. And as these technologies get better and better, we are going to need to talk more about how to implement them correctly to both preserve individual freedom as well as enhance human capabilities. There's a high profile book coming out later this year that I'm excited about that will We'll explore these topics. It's called The Battle for Your Brain by Nita Farenhani. I'll have to try to get her on the channel. And really, it's just the beginning of a series of debates amongst the public about BCIs and freedom. So I asked the question, is that what the elites are worried about? I mean, some debates have been happening about data in the internet for 20 to 30 years. So I'm not sure that's completely new. And I think that there's something deeper there that we need to discuss. All right, let's talk about the US Air Force. 
I can't say much in terms of specifics, but I'm working with the group that's taking a look at using these technologies with fighter pilots and other military personnel. Within a fighter pilot's helmet, it would work to gather more data and track attention and alertness to have more information if a pilot passes out or a jet goes down. But in my opinion, there's absolutely some potential for additional flight controls within fighter pilot helmets using these BCI technologies. One device that could prove as a starting point is OpenBCI's Galea project. Galea attracted a bunch of attention at CES this year, and I had a great time doing a private demo with them in Las Vegas. It was great to just test different features like being able to have the VR headset on and smirk and do other facial gestures to control arrows onto the screen. There was a meditation exercise based on brainwaves. I'm sure fighter pilots would love to be able to call up information on their augmented reality visors simply by smirking or doing some other gesture that allowed them to keep their hands on the joystick. Naturally, this would also apply to video games as Gabe Newell of Valve famously said in 2021. And I do wanna say that there are rumors that the big guy himself, Peter Diamandis, is interested in Galea as well. They've been doing a lot of VR demonstrations at Abundance 360 and biosignals that contribute to the VR experience seem to be the logical next step and a way to spice things up at the next event where there's a lot of investors that really could take these BCI technologies to the next level. In fact, I know that XPRIZE has released an avatar project award where the idea would be to create a robot avatar and collecting biosignals in AR and VR headsets really is the next logical step there. Outside of fighter pilot helmets, these concepts would also apply to other consumer products. I had a great time doing a demo with Wiseer this year at CES. Wiseer has developed a set of earbuds that can detect the clenching of your jaw through EEG signals in your ear canal. After doing a short tutorial, I found that the controls were very responsive. I only had to clench my jaw a little bit to start and stop TikTok videos, for examples. And I could really imagine being able to access controls on my phone without having to touch anything or even say things through programs like Siri. They're also refining a technology that can tell which direction your eyes are moving for additional controls, much like iDun showed me last year at CES. One of the more bizarre and almost unsettling things that has happened to me over the last two years is that I was contacted by the DARPA of the German government. To be honest, I was a little apprehensive because I was just getting out of the US military and I wasn't sure if I should be talking to another country about BCI technologies as an active duty member. But it's not like I shared any top secret information and they're an ally, so I did the call anyways. The German officers were great. They asked me awesome questions about the differences between EEG, FNIRs, and other technologies that could be potentially put into wearables. We spoke about the improvements that need to be made to hardware to improve the signal to noise ratio and what AI could do for improving outputs and effectiveness of these technologies. Overall, the call was great and I enjoyed it a lot. But the question in my mind is what does the German government want with BCI technologies? Is there a BCI arms race that's revving up that I'm not aware of? Do they need more leverage nor more power for things that are happening behind the scenes? Will there be a fight amongst countries for BCI superiority? Honestly, these are all questions that have been on my mind lately as this field progresses. Now switching over to the medical side of things, I met up with iMedisync again and tried on their new version of a quantitative EEG helmet They got FDA approval in the US this year. This is extremely exciting and we could be seeing these headsets roll out to clinics in the US this year. We know that brain assessments in various mental health disorders is a growing area of interest as AI is better able to assist making diagnoses based on brain signals and guide better treatments. And along the same thread, I think that the big med tech companies are getting very interested in BCI as well. I had a really great call last year with billionaire and co-founder of Boston Scientific, John Abel, who just wanted to talk about BCI technologies, see what the current state of the niche was. We had a great time of talking about the philosophy behind BCI's, where it could head, and how to use it most effectively to help all of mankind. As far as details, we discussed similar topics that I talked about with the German DARPA team 
team, John struck me as a very intelligent polymath who liked to talk about technology and brainstorm on different ways to improve it. At the end of the call, he gave me the biggest compliment. He said, this is great what you're doing. You might have something here. And honestly, that meant all the world to me. Here on Tech for Psych, I really strive to provide information for you, the audience, about where this field is and where it's going. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so I can continue bringing you the highest quality information on BCI. Honestly, these compliments from John Abel and other industry leaders are really inspiring and keep me going, but it makes me think, are we missing bigger trends that are happening behind the scenes in the medical industry or in the BCI industry overall? I think yes and no. Certainly over the last five years, things have progressed rapidly and more and more people are paying attention to brain computer interface technologies. And if high powered people have a focus on a certain niche, they are going to have a richer viewpoint that's behind the scenes with more influential people and making moves and distributing capital that's necessary to make something like BCI mainstream. But I will say one thing is certain. The showcase of ChatGPT last month has awakened our collective consciousness that AI is extremely powerful and that it is here to stay. So what do the elites don't want to say publicly? I think it's that we actually need to use BCI to augment human capability to interact with AI or AI is just going to leave us in the dust. Now, I don't want to scare people. They don't want to scare people. Overall, I'm optimistic that BCI will continue to improve our lives, especially in combination and interface with AI. It's going to make us smarter, healthier, more capable, and hopefully have a more direct and positive impact on the physical world around us. But there's a lot of questions. Will it increase the wealth gap? Will this lead us further away from what it means to be human? How exactly will that go down? Only time will tell. I will say that most people use the internet and smartphones these days, and I see BCI as being a natural extension of that that I think most people will adopt, especially if they are trying to be competitive in a professional environment. And the more that this develops, the more that I see the big tech companies doing some serious research in the space. For example, this Meta AI paper took a look at EEG and MEG speech prediction, like the OpenAI chat GPT Colonel Fnir's video that I released least a few weeks ago. And if you don't believe me that these technologies are coming quicker than we originally thought, take a look at this video and I'll see you on the other side.